Um, well, I'm going to say it will record here and I can just send it to you later. Oh, okay. Sounds good. All right. So, hello, everybody. Does everybody speak English? Yes. Spanish. Spanish or English? You want me to speak in Spanish? Yeah. Or what? As, um, I can sit beside you know, if you want, or have you if you want to turn it. I don't understand. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, in case. I know you. Okay. Well, in case you know you don't know my name, my name is Leslie. Um, I grew up in this church too. Um, I'm 25 years old. I um, am thankful because God has been good in my life. Um, he's always been faithful. Um, this is Matt. He is my fiance. Um, in case y'all didn't know, <laughs> um, God has been good, um, and he has definitely blessed me and blessed, you know, I've been able to see God's grace on my life. Um, today I want to do something a little different. Um, first, um, even though we just prayed, I still want to pray again, just something short, quick. Um. You'll just bow your heads. Um, dear God, thank you for allowing us to be here today. Um, thank you because you are good and faithful, and thank you because for a reason we are here and for a purpose we are here today. Um, I just ask you to let it be you speaking through me and not let it be me, but let it be you, Lord. Let them not see Leslie, but let them see you, Lord. Um, Lord, I just ask you to speak to each one of our hearts, Lord, and let it be you. Thank you, Jesus, because you're good and faithful. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. So, I'll sit down. So, today, um, on your index card, the first thing I want you to do is, on one side of your index card, I want you to write, how would you describe your personal relationship with your parents? Simple words, if you have a few minutes, just two to three minutes. It can be in Spanish. Here you go, Benny. What's the question? ¿Cómo es tu relación con tus padres? ¿Cómo es tu relación con tus padres? Quiero que escribas en pocas palabras, no tiene que ser tantas cosas, pero ¿cómo tú describirías tu relación con tus padres? So I gotta take a moment for them to think about it. I'll give y'all a moment. I do. Okay. Yeah, so we just started, so um, one side, you said uh, right now, your relationship, how it is with your which is about to explain to that. You want to repeat the question again? How, how, what is so, it? So, um, one of the cards I want, oh, one of the cards, but one of the sides I want to write, how would you describe in your So today, 
today. Um, we're going to be talking about, I feel like it's a topic that is pretty simple, but it's so much depth to it. Um, we will be talking about one of the most powerful commandments, I feel like, is, and it's one of the commandments that comes with the biggest blessing. Can anybody guess what commandment it is? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Who wants to? Who wants to answer? I'll give you chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 So yes, that's gonna be our topic today. It's going to be what commandment is it? Can somebody tell me what commandment it is? Second one. Second one. <laughs> it is. It's a big commandment. Okay. Um, we're gonna open up our Bibles. Okay. We're gonna open up our Bibles. Or if you have the phone app, I mean the phone app, the Bible app. Just don't get distracted. Put that phone on. Do not disturb. Okay. Um. This one. Read this. You can be an English professional. Exodus 2012. <laughs> Sorry. Exodus 2012. Is English or Spanish? Excellent, Okay. Is it twelve? Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land and the Lord your God is given. All right, so now on your index card, on the other side, I want you to write, what does this commandment mean to you? In your own words, what does it mean to you? Once you're done, you can bring it up here and just start a pile right here. Make sure you shuffle them. That's funny. Yes. Are they cold? Yeah, I mean, I'm fine. Thank you. 
So we were doing um, some questions, one of them being, you know, how's your relationship with your parents? And then she uh, asked us to read Exodus 20, 12, I think that's the Bible. It's the Bible on the And we just wrote that. Um, yeah. Has everybody turned one in? Well, how's your relationship with, with your parents? Is that the how's your relationship with your parents? Yeah. Uh, one of the first questions is how's the relationship? Well, by somebody just like yeah. there's one. <laughs> and some of y'all clearly don't know how to follow the oh. and left one side empty and the other side full of things. Oh, my fault. Y'all, I work with kids all day, so if that just comes out, I just might talk to you like a little bit, but just that I've gotten used to it. And then like this. What? What? You know, I've got you all the time. So I'm just gonna, you know, just ring randomly. I don't know whose card is whose. Um, somebody said, I asked. So one of the questions was, what was it? How's your relationship with your parents? Somebody said it's a really close re relationship. <coughs> Good. A very open relationship. Um, some would say it's going good. Some say um, so so with my dad. Um, it's getting there. It used to be worse. Um, Nice, complicated. Something I, my relationship with parents is something I am confident with. Close. I really don't know what this says. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice it's very beautiful. I let this look normal, I guess. Um, normal. Somebody was honest and said dishonest. Um, it's close, it's fun, very lovable. Trust, loving, fun, playful, reliable, caring. That's a lot. That's good. Good. It's good and united. Good, getting better. Better than before. So, mm. as we can see, everybody has a different relationship with their parents, right? Because every parent is different, right? Um, so, all right, so now I'm going to ask another question. Is honor the same as obedience? If you say no, tell me why. Is honor, is honor es lo mismo que obediencia? Oh, yeah. Honor is the same 
Y si sí, o si no, dime por qué. Ahora ya pues. <risa> Bueno, pienso que la obediencia es una forma de mirar al Padre. Bueno, pienso que sí. ¿Tú crees que es similar? Ok. ¿Alguien más? ¿Anybody else? Gracias por responder. ¿Anybody else? Do you think honor is the same as obedience? I know y'all like the song. <laughs> okay. You can obey anybody. You can obey a teacher. You can obey a person. You can obey a boss. Because you have to. Because they're in a higher position than you. That doesn't mean you honor them. Because you're not doing it out of respect. You're just saying because you have to. Honor them is Wow. That's it. That's a, oh, that's bad. Uh, yes, that that's that's the, that's perfect answer. Um, the answer is no. They are not the same. Obedience is doing what your parent what your parents say. However, lo que dijo Miri, no sé si si le entonces es que a veces uno tiene un jefe, un jefe y uno lo obedece, pero no significa que lo lo honra. Su para ella es es un poco diferente honrar obedecer, aunque si esto obedeces, honras a alguien, lo obedeces, pero si obedeces a alguien, no significa que lo honras. ¿Qué me entiende? Nada más quería traducir lo que ella me dijo. They're not the same because you can still obey your parents, but let's say your parents say, Johan, go to take out the trash. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I boy, ma! <laughs> He's, I mean, and Johan goes do it. Goes, goes and do it. I'm going to do some famous shit here. Mm -hmm. The wife said. But he's being obedient. But is he honoring his mom or his dad, whoever told him to do something? Not no. with that attitude. Because we have an attitude or we have some type of emotion. I mean, I'm guilty of it. I've done it before. I'll be like, I'm going, that boy. Like, you know, you have you you add more than you should. Um, when honoring is just being like, okay, ma, see ya boy. I mean, or not, no, ya boy, see ma, see ma, okay, ya lo voy a And you just go and you do it, and you do it with a happy heart. That's honoring. When you don't talk back or you don't, show such emotion um while studying this i was just moved about like how important it is to honor your parents let me tell y'all i am you know how old are y'all how old are y'all 15 and sometimes you're like oh my gosh i'm ready to get out of mom's house how many be honest with me right Nobody's been through that stage. Well, I went through that stage at one point. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm ready. You know, my mom's has these straight, like, you know, these rules. You know, I went through that stage. And I'm 25 and I'm still living with my mom. And you know what? I don't want to move out, but I'm going to have to one day. Mm. <laughs> Soon. But, um, I was going with this. But, anyways, but sometimes it's just, you get caught up in the moment sometimes when you're like, you start talking back to your parents or saying stuff like, you know, something as simple as something as like even rolling your eyes. How many of you, I'm guilty of it, how many of you have rolled your eyes at your parents before? <laughs> <laughs> or like even when they're not looking or when you turn around and you know, you're going around and like, you might be like, okay, I'm going. Well, let me tell you something. Let's open up our Bibles to Proverbs 30, 17. <laughs> Let me tell y'all, this was as much for me. I took this for me first, y'all. Proverbios 10. Proverbios 30, 17. Anybody volunteers to read? 
Proverbs 30, 17. The eyes that mock at his father, and his father is to obey his mother. The ravens of the valley shall pluck it out, and the young evils shall eat it. Alright, so, meaning that something as simple as rolling your eyes to your parents is a way that you're mocking them. It's, it's a way that you're still dishonoring them. And like I said, sometimes you get caught up in the moment and you do it. And like, I mean, once you do it, you do it, you know? Um, but you know, just because, you know, that is, you know, we, you know, we do that because sometimes we just don't think about it. But what are ways that we can honor? What are ways that we can honor our parents? Like with, like you know, I'm talking about, like for example, like we were talking about eyes. What are ways that we can honor them like, with our eyes? I know that sounds weird, but what are ways that? We can? <laughs> <laughs> what are ways? <laughs> Smiling, I guess. When you smile, you, you can reflect in your eyes. Too. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, or anything. How can you honor them? I guess. Walk away. Doing the chore without them asking me to do it. There you go. What did you say, Nini? Okay, so yes, it can also be like giving them our undivided attention. Also, like looking at them in the eyes, like acknowledging them. Um, because many times they'll be talking to us and we'll be over here like, see ma, yeah, mm. okay ma, yeah, mm -hmm. and that's the way that we're not, we're not giving them our full attention, mm. that's the way that we, you know, something, things as simple as that is ways that we're dishonored. So, by all this, um, you're probably like, like, what is all this? Like, you know, we already know what honoring means. We already know what this is. What that is. I don't have enough
Let's open up our Bibles again to Micah 4 6. Do I have a volunteer to read? Micah? Miqueas, Mami Malakias, Miqueas, Malakias, 4 6. Malachi, no, Malachi, not Malachi, Malachi. Sorry, I'm sorry. Oh. English is not my first language. English is four six. You want another chocolate? No, I can't. I'm pretty satisfied with what I've got. All right. Malachi, what? Malachi 4.6 And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth to the earth. So, um, whenever we dishonor our parents, or whenever we, you know, dishonor them, we, our hearts have turned against them. And when our hearts have turned against them. For example, um, Benya, do you mind standing up? And somebody else, um, Johan, can you stand up too? Right. So let's say that this is father and son. No, over here in the middle. Okay, okay, so let's say, I'll have to stand up too. All right, so let's say this is a father and this is a son. Okay, and their hearts and the son's heart has turned against his father. So let's just imagine this, okay? It's turned against his father. So because of, um, let's say the son dishonoring his dad or dishonoring and not doing what the Bible says. It says he has turned his heart against his father, meaning that there's enough distance for them to allow a curse to fall. It says in the Bible. Like, you know, by him dishonoring, como él deshonrando a su padre, está dejando que caiga maldición. But then it says, I will turn the sons heart towards his father. So when he turns his heart towards his father and they're able to see face to face and you know they're able to no matter the differences but he's able to be like you know dad it doesn't matter the way that you are it doesn't matter you know like you know you know I, you are the way you are but I still love you. I still respect you enough because I honor you. And by him turning his heart towards his father, he is allowing for the curse to break away and allow blessing over his life. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So by us, so by us not honoring our parents, we are allowing curse upon our lives. But by, by us, you know, it's true. I don't know your parents. I may not know your situation at home. I don't. But let me tell you something. Your parents are your parents. And they love you. You know, you may say, my mom goes to work all day. My dad goes to work all day. They don't spend no time with me. They don't have time for me, and I would just like them to just spend time with me. But they go to work all day so they can buy you those $60 pairs of shoes that you want. Or so they, that you can have what you want, what they couldn't have, but they want to provide for you. You know, at this, sometimes at a young age, we're not able to see it. As you get older, you get a job, money goes like that. Once you get a job, money goes like that. How many of y'all have a job? <laughs> it's $100 the same as it was when you were five years old? No. 
by your parents. They make it work. You know, they make it work. You know, um, uh, me and Matt were discussing about this and we were talking about it. And I would like him to share <laughs> a little test, like, you know, his testimony about this. Like, it's a little about him. Yeah. All right. um, so, when I was growing up, like, we had our own farm and all, and, like, money got tight for a while, and my mom ended up, like, working two jobs and having to take care of her mom, who was, like, getting sick and older and all. And, um, like, there would be nights where she would, like, get off from her second job, go straight to her mom's house, and I wouldn't see her the whole day. Like, I used to get, like, so tired of them, like, I don't even have a mom because, like, she's working two jobs and she's taking care of my grandma and, like, I just want to spend time with her. But, like, now looking back, I understand, like, she was doing all this to, one, honor her mother and, two, like, pro help provide for my family. Like, and, like, so at the time, I was, I was just, like, I just want to spend time with her. Like, I feel like I don't even have a mom, but, like, now looking back, like, I have so much respect for all those sacrifices that her and my dad both made to help provide the life that they provided for me growing up because it's helped make me the Christian and person that I am today. Like without the sacrifices they were willing to make for me, like I know I wouldn't be sitting here right now. So like many times at the moment you can't see or you know, it might not necessarily be that you know, sometimes we say, my mom doesn't understand me. Like, you know, my mom, you know, doesn't know what I go through. You know, sure, times are different. Their times were different. Even I'm just how, like, you know, I'm just a couple of years older than you. And I would honestly not like to go back to the high school like the way it is now. Because things in the high school or like things at school are not the same from when I was in school. Like, you didn't see as much tough stuff, stuff as you see now. And honestly, you know, like, you know, honestly, like, I, like, shout out for y'all because some of the stuff that I hear about, like, you know, see things, even like, so I work at elementary school, even the things that some fifth graders say, I'm just like, oh my gosh, if that's a fifth grader doing this, Imagine a high schooler, like, you know, it's, you know, so props to y'all, you know, but aside from that, like, sure, times are not the same, but like I said, your parents are still your parents, and how many of you want to be blessed? How many of you want to have a blessed life? How many of you want to have a happy heart? How many of y'all do? Yes? No? Maybe? Yes. Yes. We all want to have a blessed less life. You know, also like, I have, like I also, okay, I do have multiple jobs, okay? I also work as an interpreter in the hospital. Y'all, I was 18 years old when I first started there, and I think the saddest part to me sometimes is Whenever I see, you know, moms up there with their sons, they may be grown, like they may be 20 or they may be 18, 16, and they're either, you know, they've gotten too drunk or whatever, or all these different situations. But the person that's out there is their mom. Mm -hmm. It may be three o'clock in the morning and their mom is in the like waiting room waiting on them, making sure their child is okay. Is the son thinking about his mom? I don't think so. But yet the mom is still there. And to me, that's, you know, and sometimes in our own moments, we don't see that our parents are always there. Um, even like also like one time, how many, one, which, who is 18? Anybody 18? Okay, imagine you having to go to a parent, 
to, let's say, Rosalia, and having to tell her that a, a kid who is like two years younger than you or three years younger than you <clears throat> is, has passed away because of an overdose or, uh, like, you know, accident. accident. Like, I had a, that was one of my first things that I ever had to do. And let me tell you, I have never, I have never seen something so like, heartbreaking in my life. Because that kid thought he was having the time of his life. But who ends up, like, you know, and his, you know, he, he may have had the time of his life, but the consequence of his time of his life was death, right? However, what happened to his, to his parents? They were left with the suffering. They were left with the hurt. Sometimes we do things or, and we don't think about our parents, the consequences. Um, like, you know, we deal with the consequences. Our parents may hurt due to our, you know, what we've done, but we are the ones that go through the consequences. And honestly, I think the best thing that we should do is honor our parents. You know, tell your mom you love her. You know, many of our parents, you know, came to a different country and they didn't even know this language. They were young. They didn't know the language, they didn't know the people, but they came to another country so me and you could have a better life. So we could be here today. They didn't care that they had to cross, you know, so many things, go through so much stuff, but they did it for you. So you could have a better future. And that's something we should be thankful for. I'm thankful for it. You know, um, tell your mom you love her. Tell, call your mom and be like, or tell your mom, like, do you need anything? That's the way you can honor your parents too. How can I help you? You know, is there anything I can do for you? That's the way that you honor your parents too. You respect them. Are also doing the right thing even when they're not around. That's the way you also honor them. And I honestly think that your parents want what's best for y'all. And there's so much potential in y'all. So much potential. You know, there's so much greatness in y'all. Like, just me observing y'all, like, even like, you know, on Sunday, for example. Being able to see some of y'all the way that y'all, the way that y'all have preached, like, honestly, that is awesome. Um, it's amazing how much y'all have allowed God to be the priority in your life. And I'm sure your parents are proud, and that's the way that you honor them too. By allowing God. Because in order for us to be able to, you know, I read something that said the way that you honor your parents is also a way that you can see how you are spiritually mature and committed to Christ. Mm. That's good. So, am I honoring my parents enough that somebody's able to see that I am doing right? Because when you honor your parents, you will, you will speak blessings. Your heart will speak goodness. And when you speak blessings, others will notice that you're speaking blessings and others will bless you. That's what honoring your parents is. And, and I honestly believe that all of y'all, all of y'all um, honor your parents. I speak it in faith, right? We all honor our parents, right? Yes. We all honor our parents because we all want to be blessed. Do we want to be cursed? We don't want to be cursed. We want to be blessed. And that was short. And I hope y'all were able to understand. But I hope that y'all were able to 
understand a little something and thank y'all for allowing me to share with you. So Leslie has been like she said, she's how old were you when you guys came here to the church? Um, you were little. When I came to the church, I was when we were in the church, I was two. Wow. So we've been here for twenty three years. So I know that she hasn't been able to participate in a lot of the youth functions in the last year or so. Because she's been working and studying and preparing for a wedding. But I wanted her, I talked to her on Monday and I said, you know, Tom, you have a lot to share every time we have retreats and things like that. Women who preach comes and talks to the youth. And I wanted her to come and share with you guys. And she's always been a part, even though from a distance, she's always been there. It was weird because when I announced at the beginning of the month that it was the youth month to participate and do the cleaning and, and all that we've been doing, um, I sat down and then like random. I don't know. Were you watching on YouTube? I think I was. I think I was at. Well, I don't think yeah, I was at his church because, like you know, I would think I was at his church and then I, I was like, saw it and then I was like, let me text her. <laughs> yeah, she sent me a text in the middle of service and, uh, <laughs> and she's like, hey, I'm here, you know, to help with whatever, you know, if you put me to clean or whatever you need. And those are ways that you honor those. Your parents and, and, and others in, in leadership. Mm -hmm. I, I um, respect her for that and appreciate you guys coming. And, um, you know, a lot of times, I, like today, I was talking to my mom, and most of y'all's parents grew up in another country, not here in the United States, right? Mm -hmm. And this is completely, you know, I think not completely different, but there's a lot of differences. And their goal to come to this country. The main goal, I believe, is for a better life because I think that work was probably harder. Money, income was harder in, in Mexico or Cuba or wherever, you know, your parents were from. So the goal was to come here for a better life. And when they came here, they focused on doing that, doing that by being able to work and work and work. And I remember when I was younger, that's what my parents did, even though my dad was American. Um, I remember when I came here, I think I was like 11 to the United States, I was about 11. And I remember going to school and, and seeing like activities, uh, picnics that the school would have and things like that. And, and it was always my mom that was there. And because my dad was always working. I don't know if you guys have, have, have most of y'all have experienced that when y'all have activities. Um, then maybe you, you don't have your parents there, but then the white people, the, the Americanos, they always use, I mean, I, I don't know, in my time, the parents of the of American people were always there, but I didn't ever, it was always my mom. And um, it just, it's just a different way of thinking because their way of loving, it's like, I don't know, I think I saw Ellie. Ellie, are you here? Mm -hmm. I think I saw you the other day reading a book that said something about the five love languages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a really good book because sometimes, the way I love um, is a different way. Like some people might like gifts. I'm not into gifts. I don't like, I, I need words. Um, and the way that maybe they're showing their love to you guys is, you know, by buying things or providing for you and giving you food and buying things. And maybe you, you, you're needing another kind of love. So it's good to be able to communicate with your parents. But deep down, it's like, Leslie said, they're your parents and they're, they love you. We made mistakes and sometimes you guys may not understand and we might not understand you guys, but ultimately they would give their life for each one of you. So thank you, Leslie and Matt, for coming. I don't know if anybody has any questions. I also had asked Leslie to come because she also works at the, at the hospital and I was like, I'm always curious, you know, what's going on at, at the hospital. And I was like, so I, you know, what's the worst thing you've seen? And she was explaining to me, you know, some, you know, giving, like being in child, childbirth. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, ladies, you know, giving I had birth to babies. Before. And um, and then she told me, that I think the, the hardest, uh, the hardest thing I've ever had to do was that. And she said that she remembers uh, an 18 year old uh, that had drank too much and uh, an overdose or something, and then uh, and the parents weren't there. And when the parents got there, she, because they spoke Spanish only, she had to be the interpreter and tell them that their son had passed away. And seeing, uh, seeing 
the eyes, their eyes, and the disappointment, and the grief, and the hurt, and that's it. They get to say goodbye to their son. And there's all those consequences to, to the actions that we take. So you know, I'll be careful. I want you, you know, the, the things that, that we do, listen to your parents. Because like a verse that says, that, that, that said, uh, Exodus 20, 20, 12, honor your parents so that you may have a long life. And um, the way to have a long life and a blessed life is by honoring and being obedient to them. Even when we don't like it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any questions? Anything you want to share or a testimony of something? We have chocolate. <laughs> I get one. Come on. <laughs> I can't. Uh, come on. Come on. Right. There you go. Anybody have anything to share? <laughs> testimony or something that you can like? Something that happened, you know, that your parents told you. You know, don't do this or don't do that, and you went and did it anyway, and then you saw. I mean, anything. You all have our experiences. Good to open up and share now. Well, I'll call you all out on Sunday. <laughs> Sunday the last Sunday that we get to share. So share now or share on Sunday. He's my already experienced that. <laughs> you don't want to share something? Huh? You know, una experiencia you know. De tantas. De tantas. <laughs> Yo creo que a veces pues, no valoramos el esfuerzo y el trabajo que pasan nuestros padres. Acá los padres trabajan y se ve el esfuerzo y el sacrificio que han hecho porque yo no veo ningún muchacho aquí con ningún zapato con un huevo, ni no veo ningún muchacho con la camisa rota, en Cuba lo que se ve, ¿no? por más que los padres se esfuercen y le hacen de dar una vida mejor a los muchachos, en Cuba ¿no? hay mucha posibilidad, hay mucha escasez y aún se ve que los muchachos, los padres no le han dado a los muchachos que no pueden y lo, se ven como los hijos aman y, y honran a los padres. Ahí, mi pastor de jóvenes, un muchacho que creció sin nada, la casa de madera, creció sin nada y los padres, el papá lo abandonó. Y hoy en día él tiene 29 años, creo que tiene, no recuerdo. Pero él, aún el padre abandonándolo, él recogió al papá, le da comida al papá. La mamá igual lo abandonó y él tiene a la mamá. La comida a la mamá, honra y ama a los dos, y ahora llama a los padres, aún los padres no dándole nada. Y ahora nos vemos aquí la vida que los padres nos dan todo, los padres nos, nos suplen en todo lo que nosotros pedimos: teléfono, ropa, zapatos, y muchas veces no valoramos esas cosas, no desobedecemos a los padres, desobedecemos a las órdenes, como dice. A la hermana que nos mandan a hacer algo y ponemos mala cara. Muchas veces esas pequeñas cosas, eh, esas pequeñas cosas son para ellos, es suficiente para uno demostrarle el amor y el respeto que uno debería demostrar. Y a veces pienso que no valoramos lo que tenemos, no valoramos todo el esfuerzo que ellos han hecho con nosotros. Eso, el hecho de venir para acá a un país que ni conoce un idioma diferente. Nada de eso hemos, hemos valorado. Ni, ni hemos, ni, ni, muchas veces no lo hemos amado. Por el simple un consejo que nos han dado o una orden que nosotros tenemos que obedecer y todo, todo los esfuerzos que han hecho por años por, por esa simple orden. Lo echamos todo abajo, los padres también, aunque no crean, tienen sentimientos. Y una simple mala acción, aunque ustedes no los vean y ustedes ven que al momento ellos los regañan, a la hora que ellos cierran la puerta del cuarto, ahí pueden estar destrozados por dentro. Lo viví con mi mamá. Mi mamá lloraba delante de mí, yo la veía llorar. Y, y a mí seguía haciendo lo que yo quería. 
y los padres son muy fuertes que se vean por fuera también, tienen sentimientos, tienen, tienen un corazón y creo que um, debemos honrar y respetar a nuestros padres por encima de todas las cosas y valorar el esfuerzo que ellos han hecho con nosotros. I know I always uh, share, um, y'all get tired of listening to me, but uh, 10 years ago, I know I didn't have a relationship with my parents. Like in the beginning, the girls that missed it, Leslie asked, <laughs> how is your relationship with your parents? And I wouldn't really talk to them or ask them any questions or express how I felt about certain things or questions that I had about certain things. And now, I mean, I thank God that God, I see, especially with my mom, I have a really deep connection with her. Like, I can go to her for anything. Like, if I have a question about something or if I want an opinion or, um, you know, just something simple, or even something as simple as like telling her I love you every every single day. And even a kiss, you know, on a cheek would be honoring our parents. And sometimes, and I'm not, I'm not gonna say I'll give her a kiss every day, but sometimes when I know that I'm gonna, I'm not gonna see her all day until like the next day, and I, I'm like, no, I gotta give you a kiss because I'm not gonna see you for you know, the whole 24 hours. But, you know, just stuff like that. And I just want to say, um, you know, just be careful on um, decisions that you make. Sometimes you think it's the right decision. Or if you want to, you know, hang out with certain people that, you know, we know that we're not supposed to hang out with, you know, just be careful. Because por algo ellos nos, nos dice que no o nos disciplina. Because they see what could happen. Or they see what kind of people, they probably can see what kind of person they are. And I remember just one quick testimony. I think I shared it a while back, but one time, it was actually my graduation night. Um, I had gone to my girlfriend's house back then, and I was with my brother and a cousin. And then um, that night, I went home, it was four in the morning. And I was really tired and and it was in the back roads too. So, you know, the back roads are narrow, there's bridges, it's like deep woods and, but I fell asleep, I guess. Yeah, when I opened up my eyes, I was like on the ditch, driving off on the road and le doy gracias a Dios because it wasn't like in the bridge, you know, está bien hondo en los puentes. But who, who was I going to call? My girlfriend? <laughs> no. no. Was I going to call my friends? No. I had to call my dad, my, my mom and dad. <laughs> well, actually, I called my dad. I, was, I didn't want to worry my mom, but she came along. <laughs> she wanted to see if I was okay. You know, she's going to, your parents, they're always going to be there for you. Always. Not your buddy. Not your boyfriend, girlfriend. Or well, something, maybe, yeah, but. Um, but your parents mainly is going to be there, you know, they're, they're always going to be right there beside you, but um, <laughs> everything that Leslie said, it's, it was good, it was great. Thank you, Leslie. Mm -hmm. Next week is prayer, um, prayer week on the Semana de Oración. And um, they're going to be down there. And um, the Lord woke me up with uh, a song yesterday, and I was going to do it with the musicos. But then I felt like um, sharing it with whoever likes to sing, likes music, likes to uh, work with children, because I, he put in my heart to make like a little choir with the with all ages. So I'm going to be announcing it during the week. Um, that niñas como, um, I forget the 
everybody's name, but uh, Janet, your, your sister, uh, what's your sister's name? Grace. 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 Esas niñas, uh, la niña de soledad, you know, sus hermanitas. But I need you guys to help me if you guys like um, music or singing. And you, you girls, I want you to come next week at 7.30. We're going to practice. I was like, but when are we going to go? Uh, the song is going to be, I don't know if you've heard, on April 11th, there's going to be Como Un Convivio, because the church, they've been fasting for 40 days, and it's going to be over the first week of April, and then we're going to all eat outside and have a, a, a songs and dance and all that stuff. And um, so I'd like for you guys to help me with you guys singing uh, this song that the Lord put in my heart. So if you uh, can help me, I'd like for you to stay an additional five minutes when we dismiss. If y'all can stay so y'all can hear the song, download it or put it on your phone so y'all can be hearing it and then motivate the, the other kids to come on next week, every day, 7.30, when everybody's praying down there, we'll be up here practicing the song for April 11th. Okay? Amen. And if you have an instrument, guitar, whatever, y'all bring it. We're going to be practicing up here. Yes, you too. <laughs> Musicals are obligated to go. <laughs> Joanna, if you all have an instrument, you'll bring it. If you all can plug it up and be here. Okay? Amen? Tienes algo, Rosalia? ¿Cuál es eso? La voy a poner, pero vamos a, porque no creo que todos van a querer quedarse. So, vamos a World Dismiss. And then if you can stay an additional five minutes, I can give you, or not, maybe not even that. So I can give you all the songs. Wait, we're gonna.